just the sound of the guitar. Just one line is so beautiful. But the coolest thing about guitar is you can play two lines, or if you will, two notes at the same time. And we call that double stops. Now for me, when I started playing guitar and I started playing pentatonic stuff, I was always kind of in awe when I saw guitar players do all these I really didn't understand how they know what to choose. What we're gonna do right now is work on seven levels where we integrate the idea that we can play single lines, but also we can play those different sounds, those double stops to kind of spice up our playing. Where do we start? So what we're gonna do is choose a key. I'm gonna choose G major, just because it sounds so freaking great. And I'm gonna just play a little loop. For example. Loop that. I'll add a diet, literally a double stop. G major, B minor, A minor, D sus. Maybe I'll play full chords as well. Have a loop. I'm gonna solo a little bit around G major pentatonic slash E minor. It's the same kind of center, not exactly the same, but that kind of soundscape. But I'm gonna start adding. And how do I know what to do? Right, that's the question. So in order to understand what, what to do, we need to first examine the center itself. Question, who is your favorite guitar player these days? I wanna check out some new folks, so just drop a comment with some cool people you're listening to and I'll learn some stuff, thank you. It's really helpful for me to try and connect to my ears as much as possible. So I'm gonna just listen to this G sound for a second and sing the scale really quickly just to kind of center myself before I dive into the solo, before I do all this work. So Against this kind of G center, I'm playing very diatonic chords. I'm playing one G major, then B minor, then A minor, and then this D sus. Check this out one more time closely. Now all I did was just looping these four chords very simply. Right? When I'm soloing, I'm gonna choose the G major pentatonic. The G major pentatonic is the same thing as E minor. So if we know this classic pentatonic box, we can totally, totally use that. But we need to understand where the center is. This is why I kind of like said, ah, let's hear this G and have this in our ears. So we don't feel in E minor. It's really G major. That's the center. Now, okay. So we know G major pentatonic, right? Just the box. But now I'm gonna grab two notes at a time. So I'm literally gonna take this classic box and play the two notes of the pentatonic slowly but surely. Now notice that it's not gonna be all in fourth. It's a lot of fourth, but the second interval is gonna be a major third. So fourth, major third, fourth, fourth. Now I'm basically just taking the consecutive notes in the scale. So if this is, so I'm doing, and then, so connecting those. It's very simple in that sense, but again, like a lot of things, it's not complicated, but we need to know the framework to mess around it. Now, this is another big topic that, okay, so let's say you know your E minor pentatonic slash G major pentatonic, awesome. But now you also understand, you know, okay, you can do the double stops, but can you actually play it? Can you actually solo with it? Can you create with it? So this is why it's really important to create. So this is what we're gonna do in level two. 
If you like this kind of content, the best way to support and allow me to do more of this for you guys is checking out the Patreon. There's also a PDF for this video and a lot of PDFs and loops and a bunch of stuff there. So thank you. So here, we're just gonna groove with this, place simple ideas and combine simple lines with the diets, with the double stops. could be as simple as that. I literally took those couple of notes, those just the top strings, right? And I'm doing it a very simple way. It's kind of like A, B almost. A line, a diet, a line, a diet, a line versus a diet. It doesn't have to be all the time like that, but it's a very useful tool to start kind of integrating things. So I think a lot of times with music, we practice different things, but we don't practice the execution of them, if that makes sense. So we really want to like take the scales, take the arpeggios, take the double stops and make music right now. So let's loop it together. Play with me. Now maybe a double stop. So now let's go to level three. In level three, we're gonna explore a little bit of different sounds. So we have the pentatonic, which is awesome, but like we said, we are in G major scale, so we can totally use that framework. If you're feeling this, please hit the like button and subscribe and maybe even drop a comment to help the, the YouTube bots to um, help us. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna take this position here just because people usually are comfortable with this position for G major scale. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play each note and I'm playing the thirds. So, first of all, it sounds super, super great. Let's just sing it so we really enjoy the full color of this. So, Even just playing thirds on the scale sounds so good. So, you know, combining the, the position, the scale with some thirds and an idea on your solo could be super, super strong. Let's do the framework one more time, but now two octaves from G to G. Let's try it. I just released a new song a couple of days ago. So check this out. It's a new song. This link would mean the world if you listen and I hope you like it. different fingerings if you want. The point is hearing the scale and harmonizing each note with a third. So the rule of thumb is basically you're skipping one note, right? So sol, si. So just skipping that A and go to the next one. This is a third, major third, minor third, minor, major, etc. You can also use a PDF here if that's helpful, no problem. Cool. So we know our thirds, we know G major scale, but most importantly now we need to make music. So let's do it. Diets. Scale. Right? So it doesn't need to be anything fancy or crazy, just a little bit of color. Those splashes of sounds 
you know, just those dies, those thirds sound really, really cool. And I'm really kind of limiting myself to be in this neck of the woods because, you know, we're trying to use the framework that we're working with. But of course, if you're working on G major scale, I would work on the whole guitar so you're very free. For example. Right, just spreading, you know, spreading the love all across the fingerboard. So for that, of course, we need to practice each position, seeing the framework, hearing it, seeing it, all these actions. Let's go to level four. One of the most beautiful sounds on guitar is the sound of the sixth. So what we're gonna do first is just take one area of the guitar where we're gonna work on the sixth. Again, framework, understanding just how we can see it, how we can hear it, and then connect that into a solo situation with this loop or with any loop that you wanna create. Let's try it. We can take this G major scale here, this position, and play those intervals, the sixth, but I wanna even do it more simple than that. I wanna just grab the top note, the top line, the top string on the guitar, and I'm gonna harmonize that with the sixth. So what we're getting is this kind of sound. Right, literally the scale, but just with a six. And you can really hear the chords almost behind it when you're playing that. Because when you're playing a G major chord, you have this beautiful six kind of hiding in the background, or maybe not that in the background. So what I want to do is we're going to solo with this loop and integrate that, just that. It's a simple thing, but it's super, super strong. Right, so you see, I'm really using those seven options. I'm literally harmonizing G major scale from that, you know, first string, and just being comfortable, you know, with seeing and hearing those sounds on that string can open a whole new world. Six, all right, so until now, we spoke about quite a few things. We talked about the pentatonic scale. We talked about the major third and the major and minor six. So you understand that framework is really important, but in this point, I want to kind of even more reinforce the idea of taking your time. So don't try to do everything at the same time. Just take one color. If you like and kind of feeling that, you know, six sound and you're like, wow, this sounds beautiful. Just follow your heart, you know, and be like, okay, I'm just going to dive into this color and maybe I'll do it on one string. Maybe I'll do it on one area and then Maybe write a little song, a little loop, just to try and work on these kind of sounds in a certain key. The point of this is, is limiting yourself to work and dive into the color. All right, ready? Level six. All right, here what we're gonna do is take the fifth. Now, this is a super kind of empty interval, but it could be very, very cool. Sometimes you can even stack two fifths, which has this beautiful, beautiful sound. It's not gonna work all the time when we're playing these, these loops. It depends on the chord, it depends on the, on the tonal center. But let's try first with just one fifth. Check this out. Just that sound, right? So how do we get that? Well, again, framework. We can talk about the sound of the fifth, but we can literally just take the scale, the G major scale. Many different optional fingerings. Sometimes I like to change the the, the fingerings and, and kind of stay in one position. Sometimes I'll just take this shape and move it all across the guitar, right? Because if you're playing sometimes fast, sometimes it's very convenient to move it, but sometimes also other things work. Just try and explore. think about the major pentatonic all those would work here you can also do the double fifths 
just as a color passing kind of color double fifth is basically just stacking two fifths really cool guitar sound now of course if you're just gonna play it in shape like this it's gonna be very chromatic to sound the chords but sometimes as a passing chord it's really really cool and last but definitely not least we're gonna mix all these ideas and create on a loop. Again, try to balance your time between exploration and creativity. Let's do this. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this was cool and fun and interesting. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.